So the first thing we're going to do is stencil the side design onto the cake. Now, stenciling is quite a tricky art. I don't really like stenciling onto round cakes, and I'll explain why as we go along. A flat surface like a square cake or the top is far easier to stencil than a curve. But we're going to, going to do this for you just to show the difficulties and things to look out for. Now, my cake has been coated for at least 24 hours because I don't want to do this onto fresh fondant. I want to do it so it's got a bit more robust area to press against. Now, the stencil I'm using is a designer stencil. I got these from Lindy Smith. I do believe designer stencils is an American company. And the other one I'm going to be using is also a designer stencil. So I will endeavor to put the link onto the material and equipment list for you. Now, first thing we need to do is actually look at your stencil. Now, this may be a very beautiful stencil, and it's one I use a lot, but there are downfalls. Now, if you look at it as a flat surface to stencil on, it's perfectly easy to use. But the moment I curve that stencil, you will probably note there's pieces on here that will stick up. So when I put that around my cake, they will not fit flush to my cake. So those are things you need to be aware of. So whenever you buy a new stencil, really look at it and look out for those places on that it's likely to go wrong. So I know I have to put that round there. There you go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Trex, white vegetable fat, and actually rub it on the surfaces that I think are going to stick out. I do that to help it ever so slightly adhere to the cake. I don't want too much white vegetable fat on there, but a little bit's not going to hurt it. It will just mean I'll end up with a cleaner piece to my cake. Secondly, how do I attach it around the cake? So I'm going to turn this over. Now, I've got some of my cash register roll, and we all know I like cash register roll. Take that, take a bit of sellotape, and I'm using sellotape this time. You know I normally use masking tape, but I need it to be a stronger grip. And I've made a little tab at the end so that I know I'll be able to take it off quite easily. Now, before I go sticking the other end on, what I want to do is lift this up and make sure that it could go around my cake and that my piece of paper won't end up covering up some of my design, which it will in this case. There are different ways of doing this. You will find some decorators will use elasticated bandage to do this. Some will have a friend help them to hold it into place. Let's make that sure that's central there. Um, I tend to use this method because I tend to work on my own a lot in the studio. So I don't always have the joy of having someone to help me out with that. Right, make sure that's all the way around. Get it as tight as you can possibly wrap it, but you do not want it so tight that you're actually going to end up marking your fondant or your sugar base. So I'm going to turn this around because I need to see that this is central. That looks fine to me. Now, as you can see, these pieces here will flap out, okay? So we need to be cautious of that. I've put a bit of Trex behind them, so giving them a little bit of a rub might just encourage them to go back against the cake, but it's something I need to be aware of. Now, when I pull a scraper around this cake, you would naturally think you would go from one end all the way to the other, if you do that, you could tuck icing underneath these. So I found with this particular stencil, if I go from the center outwards, I get a cleaner stencil. So make sure it's all in place. I just need to stand up a second. Now, as far as the icing I'm going to use, move that back a second, I'm using relatively soft peak raw icing. As you can see, it's a bit like whipping cream, a bit like ice cream that sort of consistency. Okay, probably won't need that much, but more is better than less in this instance. Now, if I was to rub this palette knife cross here, you'll see there's lots of air bubbles. If I paddle it down, it'll soften it slightly, but what it will also do is it will work out those air bubbles. Now, any air bubble on here may just look like an air bubble. But if you're stenciling and there's an air bubble, what that air bubble will turn into will be a hole in your stencil. So, there you go. As you can see, it's already become a bit smoother. So 
sir. Now it depends on what equipment you have access to. I picked this scraper up in an art store. Don't actually know what it's normally used for, but this is what I use to scrape with. It could be a side scraper for a cake. It could be a palette knife. There are several different things you could use. So I'm going to load up my scraper. Now your aim is not to have it come over the top and the bottom edge. If it does, don't worry about it. We'll talk about sorting that out as we go along. So first of all, making sure that your cake is secure, I'm going to put that onto the stencil, swipe around from the center all the way around to the end and take it off. If it doesn't look like it's covered at all, go back one more time, smear it round and off. Then using the same action, I'm going to start, don't go that way, start on the other side and work my way around to the end. As you can see, it's really important that your icing is actually nice and firm, and I mean the sugar paste or the fondant. Right, that's nicely covered there. Let's get that out of harm's way. The last thing I need to do is actually put more icing on top of it. Now, hold your stencil so that it's still in place and release it. And by that I mean release the paper. Then what you need to be aware of is to release this directly forward so that you leave behind a nice clean stenciled area. Stuck my thumb in the top, that's always a nice thing to do, Griffiths. Now, take immediately take a look at your stencil. If there's any bits in there you need to tidy up, go in with a brush and tickle them up. But that's how I would do that. I would then use a clean palette knife and just take off anything that's caused me a problem. Also, I dug the scraper into the board there. Just tidy that. There's actually going to be a bottom border on this anyway, so I don't need to worry too much. There you go. So let's have a little look at that from the front, just so I can see what you can't see. There you go. So that will give you an idea of the difficulties of stenciling onto a round surface. As I said, I prefer to stencil onto flat fronts, as in with a square, hexagon, octagon, that sort of shape. We're going to move on in a second. We're actually going to talk about stenciling the top as well. And you'll see how much easier it is to do that. So I'm going to tidy up here a bit and we'll move on to there.